Hey everyone, Too Angry Frogs here, and now that the Warlock is leveled to 80, I thought I would pass on what I learned along the way. It's a pretty fast leveling experience, and in our group we have had people hit 80 at anywhere from 6 to 10 hours. And there are some very cool moments in the story campaign that may surprise you, so definitely don't miss the in-game cinematics, even if you plan to skip the quest text. So let's talk about what's required and a few tips to help reach level 80 on your characters. But before we begin, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you always know what we're up to next. Now, let's get into it. To start the war within intro quest line, your character must have reached at least level 70. Also, you must have completed the Harbinger pre-patch quest line. However, this requirement may be removed once the expansion launches on August 26th. To start the intro quest line, you'll get a pop-up quest, A Mysterious Morning, which tasks you with meeting Cadgar and Dalaran in the Chamber of the Guardian. This is the same area where we started the Radiant Echoes pre-patch event. This will start a series of quests that must be completed in Dalaran that ultimately ends with you under a pile of rubble on the Isle of Dorn, the starting zone in the War Within. This starts the quest Violent Impact and begins the War Within campaign. For your first character, you must follow a linear progression path and the zones must be visited in the following order. And while following this linear progression path may seem restrictive, it does provide a clear path for leveling up your first character. The main level up campaign will only get you to level 76, so you will need to complete some side quests or run a few dungeons along the way. From our experience, there is no gating like what we saw in beta testing so we did not have to wait to pick up quests to continue the campaign in the next zone. While this did surprise us, to say the least, we think this is a great change from what we have seen in prior expansions. It's important to note that side quests do not level up with your first character. So, for example, if you skip all the side quests in the Isle of Dorn until you finish the campaign and then go back, they will give less experience. For this reason, we recommend following the level requirements that Blizzard has laid out for each zone, unless you plan to finish your leveling after the campaign by purely running dungeons. Note that for your first character on the Isle of Dorne, there is a requirement to run through the Rookery dungeon to progress the story. But for players that would rather stay solo, the great news is that follower dungeons can be used to progress the main story. So again, another great change for this expansion. Your priority for your first character should be to open up Adventure Mode for you and your alts. Adventure Mode is a new system added in Dragonflight and carried over into the War Within and is basically an alt leveling system and gets you to in-game content. To open Adventure Mode, you must complete the campaign in all four zones. You will complete an achievement when each zone story is completed, so this is very easy to track. After completing the story campaign, you can then start the first chapter of the max level campaign. When you accept the final quest and go back to Dornigal, you will unlock Adventure Mode for your Warband. Note that we have seen it stated that you must be level 80 to open Adventure Mode, but again, this was not our experience. When I reached level 77 with the Warlock after completing the main campaign, I was able to open Adventure Mode right away. Adventure Mode in the War Within allows your alts to skip all of the intro quest lines and head straight for Dornigal. It also opens world quests and events for all your characters and allows your alts to level up anywhere and any way they choose. Leveling alts fast and getting them ready for in-game content is a high priority for many players. So let's look at some of the best ways to streamline the leveling process. If you're planning to level multiple characters to level 80, there are some general things you can take advantage of during each character's run through. First, focus on one alt at a time. The reason for this is that each character that you level to 80 adds 5% additional experience gain for all other characters in your warband. This maxes out at 25%, so over the long run, it's much more efficient to level multiple characters to max level one at a time, as opposed to leveling them all together. Second, remember for any character, you can choose to go into War Mode to add 10% extra experience to your leveling. It's up to you whether you want to risk the occasional ganking. Finally, don't forget to log in with your alts and park them in a rested area. That way they start gaining rested XP. 
For gearing, if you have reached at least Renown level seven, there are multiple Renown vendors that you can visit to pick up Renown gear for your alts. For example, at Renown level seven for the Council of Dornegal, you can pick up gear for the shoulder slot. Since Warband characters start at the highest character's Renown level, all of this is unlocked if any character has reached these levels. With the introduction of Warbands and Adventure Mode, it is not like we had in prior Legacy expansions. It's now easier than ever to gear your alts, get started right away with world quests and world bosses, dungeons, renown, and so on. Warbands are awesome for so many things in this expansion. So when it comes to questing, dungeon grinding, and delves, it really depends on what you enjoy most. From our initial experience, we did find that either questing or dungeon grinding in group dungeons is the way to go. Grinding Delves provides much less experience gain, which is unfortunate from a solo player standpoint or for players that would prefer to hang out in Delves. We hope to see a fix to this so Delves also become an option for players. It is important to note that if you prefer solo play but want to run dungeons for experience and gear, follower dungeons are available immediately on normal difficulty in the War Within. But as with Delves, these do not provide nearly the experience that running a queued group dungeon does since you are not getting the bonus experience from doing group content. So for solo players, at least for now, we would have to recommend the questing route, which is going to be much faster than Delves or follower dungeons. If you choose to fill in some missing experience with follower dungeons or Delves, we do recommend Delves as they can be much quicker to run and depending on the Delve, grant close to the same experience as a follower dungeon. These would include delves such as Earthcrawl Mines in the Isle of Dorn, the Dread Pit in the Ringing Deeps, and the Sinkhole in Hallowfall. Another leveling opportunity carried over from Dragonflight is experience for crafting professions. When you create a new item that has a first craft bonus, in addition to gaining a skill point and knowledge point, you're also rewarded with bonus experience. It's a really quick way to gain some easy and fast experience. But when is the best time to take advantage of this? We recommend waiting until at least level 78 or 79. Since these levels require a lot more experience in terms of what you will get from side quests or world quests, it's best to take advantage of any crafting experience at this point. You can use the filter in the crafting interface to see items that give you first craft bonus. Note that the bonuses only apply to war within crafted items. For gathering professions, you'll gain experience from herbalism and mining for each herb or mining vein gathered. As with Dragonflight, skinning does not provide experience. If desired, you can take two gathering professions to not only collect the extra experience, but also gain resources that can be sold on the auction house for some extra gold. Finally, rare mobs and bonus objectives are great ways to get extra experience as well. If you see a rare that has other players around it, Definitely jump in and help with the kill. Not only do they provide a decent amount of experience, but can also drop rare loot and gear. Bonus objectives are great, as you not only get the experience from killing enemies, but also bonus experience for completing the objective. Both of these are really good to do as you go. For leveling, there are a number of consumables and other ways that can be used to help you level faster. We separate these between mobility and combat enhancement. Mobility items basically just help you move around the world and from enemy to enemy faster, reducing your downtime and contributing to faster character leveling. Note that when it comes to mobility, skywriting has changed things a lot. We were able to move around the world much faster than ever before. You can still grab items like Goblin Gliders Kit, but with skywriting, they're not required like they used to be so we have not included them here. Also, unlike Dragonflight, we start with sky riding from the time we enter Khazal Gar, so there really is nothing needed here. You don't need to go get all of the dragon glyphs to take full advantage of sky riding, so we recommend waiting on getting those if you're looking to level quickly. There are a few things you can grab to generally improve your movement speed overall. First are gear enchants. Speed enchants can be crafted or bought on the auction house for your cloak, wrists, and feet. You'll want to get the highest quality for these as long as the gold price is reasonable. All of these add to your character's speed secondary stat, increasing your overall movement. 
Next are gun shoes, a Legion engineering crafted item. These increase your movement speed 200% for 25 seconds and are on a three minute cooldown. These can be great to use in places like caves or other large inside areas, or if you need to quickly traverse across a long distance where sky riding doesn't work as well. You can also improve mobility from a talent choice standpoint. For leveling, we recommend taking all movement-based abilities in your class tree to speed up getting from point A to point B. For example, for Warlocks, definitely take Burning Rush, as you can use it a lot to move quickly around short distances. For combat enhancements, you want to boost to damage and defensiveness so you are defeating enemies quicker and staying alive longer. Items that we would recommend include drums that let you benefit from bloodlust if you don't play a class with that ability, elemental potions of power, you can buy the cheap ones here just for the extra damage, tepid versatility flasks, which provide both a bit of offensive and defensive boost, damaging runes or items that attach to your weapon, again just for additional damage, and also make sure to have plenty of healing potions just in case. So there you go. Just a few tips and tricks we learned along the way that we hope helps your leveling go smoothly and as quickly as you desire. I will say that even though you can rush through the leveling process as fast as possible, the world first to level 80 was completed in just a few minutes over an hour. That's crazy. We do encourage everyone to really get immersed in this world. The storytelling is, we think, some of the best we've seen in quite some time. So take a little time on the less traveled paths and really enjoy the start to the war within. As always, let us know your thoughts down below in the comments and everyone have a great day.